let's welcome Pastor Lance as he brings us the word. Issue Kastuti Ho. Issue Kastuti Ho. What part of India are you going to, bro? So Central, West, Central? Anybody else been to India? Hands up. Yeah? That's, you, you, don't, you don't come back the same when you've been to India. That's right. So thank God for the prayers. Well, how many of you know there will be opposition? You set your hand to the plow. You set yourself, your sights to do things for God. There will be opposition. But I want you to know something. Greater is he that is in you and me than he that is in the world. Amen. That, I don't know about you. That would make me want to do cartwheels if I was sitting where you're sitting. I just, you know, a little bit over the top, but it's good because, um, trust me, it's going to get there today. You know, I just want to look at this heading, the expansion of the kingdom of God. And in our world, into our world, and I think because many, many people profess to know Jesus as Lord and Savior, they profess it. But do you know what Jesus said back, back in gospel days? He said, many will say, I am Christ. So people are going to say, yeah, he's Christ. But he said, don't follow them. Don't listen to them. And what does that mean to us today? Does it, doesn't it mean that we have to be able to know what Jesus said for us to do so that when someone says do something that isn't what he said for us to do, we can say, chapter and verse, please. Seriously, you know, we need to know. We're coming into times that we are going to need to know if it's from God or wherever it's from. And I thank God that in our house, in this house, there's many lively stones that are all working together for good, for the furtherance and the expansion of the kingdom of God. Amen. I just want to recap something. I've been really blessed. Who's that up there? Are there only small photos? I didn't know if I made them big, if they'd pixelate or not. But So, you, get, you know, organic, the first week that we started talking about planting Jesus, Pastor B spoke about the organic nature of the kingdom. And she used parables, just the way Jesus did to explain what he wanted to say. And he talked, the parable spoke of the good soil. Seed will grow by itself. Who's ever tried to unfold a rose prematurely? It's messy. So, the seed does the same thing. You know, we don't have to try and and make it go through the growing process. It'll do that all by itself. And the small seed... Mustard seed will grow into a great tree where many will be able to shelter. That's it. Have you read my message? <laughs> so isn't that good? That was week one. Thank you, Pastor B. Week two. Now, now, now we're getting down to it. The organic nature of planting God's seed, finding good soils, allowing seed to grow. I'm getting excited. To grow itself. Uh, be ready to harvest. Start small. Kiss principle. Keep it simple, saints. Encourage spontaneous. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh, start small, keep it simple. Encourage spontaneous multiplication. And I'm thankful that God's given pastors B and Rafael this zeal. This is what, what's happening with you, James, right? I mean, God is, is doing sideways what everyone else in the world, the church, is trying to do this way and grow it to, to bigger stature. God's just saying, just let it. That is spread. Amen. Encourage spontaneous multiplication. And that was planning Jesus. Now, this is really quick overviews, but I just wanted to say, I was blessed. Who was blessed? Who's been through most of those? Is that YouTube thing available? Is it accessible? Does everyone know how to get it? Everybody has it. Please listen to it again, the, the YouTube, that final message which we're coming to. But week three was God's DNA in the church. D for divine, N for nurturing, A for the apostolic mission. That's God's part. And our part is to operate in what? Faith, love, and hope. So if we don't do that, if we're not operating in those key things, even the Scripture says in Corinthians, doesn't it? It says, you know, now, now these three things, 
But the greatest of these is love, you know, the charity that drives us to love, to do all of these things that we're supposed to be doing for Jesus. Give me an O. Give me an I. Give me a K. I'm not hearing it. Give me an O. Give me an I. Give me a K. Give me a... Hey. Oh, give me an S. What do you got? I love it. What do we got, Pastor B? Oikos. Or however you want to say it. Christ's mission is our first priority, the gospel, planting Jesus. Many people say, Pastor B was talking about how people say, oh, it's not my calling to be an evangelist. Well, just read 2 Timothy 4.2 and tell me that again. And then, you see, the Bible says a wise man wins souls. Wise woman, wise man wins souls. Okay? So they, that, that was what took place. And we could spend a lot of time talking about repentance and baptism in water and the Spirit and discipleship and evangelism, and we could expound great teaching zealously. The meat, you got to have the meat, you must have the meat. Talk about the great, sorry, the great controversies of the end times. Got to talk about it. Got to get it right. Or we could talk about knowing Jesus as our Lord and Saviour, as our brother, because there's one that sticks closer than a brother, our friend, oh, and the lover of our soul, so that the kingdom of God is actually in us. So that's what draws me. I can think of my conversion. I can think of two or three people I was drawn to. Why? Because I saw Jesus in them. I saw Jesus in their eyes. I saw Jesus in their smile. I heard the love of Jesus in the things they were saying to me. Although they were hard things to hear. So coming to that, you know, the kingdom of God in us. So that our personal salvation has to equal a personal relationship. Stay with me, Psalm 103. Bless the Lord, O my soul, and all that is within me. Bless his holy name. So we can say in Psalm 23, the Lord is my shepherd. Now, you know these scriptures. So, so how are they in, a, in, in interpersonal terms? How, how are they inside of you? <clears throat> I want to speak about the next step. I, and I, I really felt when B was speaking about that last point, you know, reaching the community and, and heading out and, and being zealous and being confident and knowing that God is present, the three Ps that uh, Rightful uh, alluded to there. The next step for me was the powerful, wonderful presence, sometimes overwhelming presence of God, but it takes us to the next step, which is expanding the kingdom of God within us. See, we'll talk about all this last few weeks. We're talking about what can we do to expand the kingdom of God in our community? And I think it's been wonderful. I've learned some things. I miss so much of that message. That's why I'm encouraging you to listen back. There's some gold in that message last week. It'll take you to new places. It'll help you understand. You can be confident. If you're in your mind saying, I can't do that. I can't do the work. I can't tell someone about Jesus. Let me tell you, you can. You can with his help. And one of the things she mentioned was about the power, the presence of God, so that when we go into these places and we affect and influence people, the power of God's present. And that's exciting to me. So I don't want to move an inch unless the presence of the power of God is here and, and working. Nigel, I'm just getting a real touch in my heart for you. Do you mind if I pray for you? Do you mind if I pray for you? Just, yeah, just, just, just raise your hands and just... Lay, point, point your hands toward Nige. Father, thank you for this man. Thank you for what you're doing. I'm just going to make this short and sweet. Father, anoint him. Just anoint him now, Father, for this work that you've called him to. Let the joy of the Lord be his strength in Jesus' name. Amen. My hope is built on nothing less but Jesus is righteousness when all around is sinking sand on Christ the solid rock I stand this was originally the, the, the title of my message the landscapes changed 
Who felt it coming into 2017? The spiritual landscape changed. It, it made us think, for me and the people I spoke to, it made us think, who are we? What are we doing? And, and why are we doing things we're doing the way we're doing them? Why? Who are we? And it's important to know who we are in Jesus and what he wants from us. I had a word just recently, and I, I, I'm quite happy to say Pastor Rafael spoke into my life. I was at that point where I didn't know what to do. I, I was overwhelmed. And he spoke in the anointing and said, Psalm 107. When you get to that point in your life, when you're overwhelmed, do what? Cry out to God. Cry out to God. You know, dig new wells. Redig the old wells. Be diversified. I needed to hear that. And it helped me a lot. So let's continue to speak. It doesn't just have to come from Pastor Rafe. Let's continue to speak into each other's lives. Let us have the power of the Spirit of God at work in our lives. Let us not compromise that. Let us not be robbed of it. I detract from what I want to say. Oh, and when the winds blew, that's what happened when I built my house on the sand. Small photos, I'm sorry. Can you all see them? That's my house on the rock, Pastor B. That's another one. Actually, that house there is the rock. But I, I feel pretty safe in there. Yabba dabba doo. <laughs> you see, there's something to be said for building your house on the rock. Okay? And you know what? I, I love to laugh. And I just noticed I'm not laughing like I used to laugh. And I think, why? What, what's stopping that? Let's have a look, eh? So the changing landscape. I want our focus to be expanding the kingdom of God in us. Now, that people say, well, like you're contemplating your navel. Or it's a bless me club. Or come on, and you know, like it's all about us. But let me ask you a question. How do you make it about the kingdom of God if you aren't getting yourself right? If you aren't digging deep? If you aren't building on a foundation? How? You know, so, so I'm, everything that we've said in the past four weeks will come from expanding the kingdom of God within you. Amen. Now, can everybody who's got a mobile phone just hold it up? Ah, oh, come on. You must have more than one or two around. Okay. Is anybody displaying this message? Any? Is he, has anybody got 10% left on their battery charge? You got 20. Okay. But let me, let me tell you something very true, dear. Yeah, I'm going to have 20 for long. All right. It's going to go to 10 real quick. And then... Ah, uh, 15%. Oh, sorry. Is that why they end up on, in flames? Anyway, so you got... <laughs> who said that? Anyway, 10% of battery remaining. Dismiss. So you've got to feel the difference. Recently, I, I, I literally sat myself down in the chair, stuck whatever the spiritual plug was into the power of God and sat there and recharged. Just Recharged. And it wasn't anything I I could do except sit in his presence. That's how powerful his presence is. Amen. Can I get a witness? Amen. So, so, So staying plugged in, I guess that's what I want to say. Staying plugged in. No matter what's happening, no matter if it's sickness, confrontation, financial crisis, loss of confidence, anxiety, fear. When you come to the end of yourself, he's there. Come on. When you come to the end of yourself, he's there. Amen. How to stay plugged into God. I think God, Miracle Point, regularly gives us encouragement of how to stay plugged in to God. And so thankful that it's not just two hours on Sunday. 
there. You know that that connection's an all-week mission. It's there all the time. Why? Because that's church. The church is that kind of organic place. It's where we come together and love one another. That's what makes us unique. So if, if four of us decided tomorrow to go down to the Monday night bingo club, we'd have ourselves a good time. I'm sure of it. We may even win a little bit of, you know, whatever. But it ain't going to give us what the love of God gives us week in, week out. I just want to say a couple of things. How to stay plugged in. There you are. I was ahead of myself. But I want you to back up a second. Just back up a second because what starts to happen is everybody gets their wings and they take the trainer wheels off and they're on their bikes and they're gone ski. And everybody's doing the things that they, they think that they should be doing. I just want to back up and talk about how you experience and how important your salvation experience actually is. Because if we don't build on that correctly... That building that we showed earlier, that's what happens. It just comes down like a house, house of cards. But how good is God? Because he's continually there even in that. So is our salvation by name? Do you know Jesus by name? Or do you know him by relationship? How important is it to know him personally? It's important. How does the kingdom of God expand within us? Now, when Jesus spoke about the kingdom of God, he showed us it was three things, I believe, essentially. One, a coming promise. Two, a present experience. And three, a future destination. I'm going to say that again. A coming promise, a present experience, and a future destination. This is why in church, what happened was, did, did you do that? Do, Lord, oh, do, Lord. Yeah, I, I had to leave for a bit because something came up, opposition came up. But you know what? I'm still here. Got a pulse, thank God. So do, Lord, oh, do, Lord, oh, do remember me in the sweet by and by. We shall meet, oh, some glorious morning, Jesus. And all these songs that just keep coming out, people just basically, they basically became happy, clappy times of people thinking about something far off. And they missed the whole point of the kingdom being present within. And so, and so that's what God wants to teach us. He wants to reteach us. Don't forget a coming promise. The kingdom of God is coming. Oh, Joe, watch out. It'll blow you off your seat. And the present experience is real. It's real. I know it's real. This Pentecostal power. Yes, I know. I know it's real. And then the future destination. I say something funny. A future destination. God's promise to us. We'll be with him in the sweet by and by. We will be with him forever. And we mustn't forget it. And what's happening is we're forgetting it. And I want to scream and say, Lance, wake up. Stop. Back up. Because if the kingdom of God expands in us, oh, I'll come back to that. John the Baptist said this, I must decrease so he can increase. There's the principle right there. If we allow ourselves to decrease and allow God to increase, the kingdom of God is expanding in us. And, and sometimes Jeremiah said it like this, it's like fire shot up in my bones. Come on, Pastor David, I thought you'd be on the chair by now. Come on. Amen. Like fire shot up in my bones. What we know it definitely isn't is works. If I could have put my face in there, I would have. Actually, it's not, far, it's not too far off, is it? Yeah. But if I, if I could have put my face in there, I would, because if everything I do is based out of works, this is the outcome. There isn't any other outcome. I get tired. I get stressed. And possibly I didn't know how to do it in that layer thing on PowerPoint. You know how you get one thing come up at a time? Because I love angry pants. I, I think angry pants says it really well. You know, have you, you must, I, mean, I apologize here and now for the times I've been Mr. Angry Pants to anybody. It's not my heart. But 
it's a very fine line to walk between understanding the difference of doing these things in faith and doing these things in, in just for the work's sake. Anyway, so we talk about the works of the flesh. You can see all about that in Galatians 5 and 19, but please read on. Because after that, it talks about the fruit of the Spirit. And that's something we don't want to miss. Amen. I believe that love in action is really the thrust, the G-force, to get the plane off the ground. Love in action. If we are acting out of love as a result of falling in love with Jesus, if we actually can say, have, you know, we're falling in love with God or we've fallen in love with him. He's, he's my everything. He is my all. If, we, if that's our connection to him, then we're on the right track because all those other things are going to be tolerable when somebody is Mr. or Mrs. Angry Pants carrying on like pork chops in church. Sorry, did, did I say that out loud? <laughs> yeah, but you know what I mean. Sometimes people just get a little bit carried away and, and they're not nice. So don't, don't be nice. I mean, I'm getting ahead of myself. But anyway, it's about being nice. You know, God, Jesus, God is love. So, we've all had, check this out. We've all heard of random acts of kindness, right? Who's had somebody do a random act of kindness? Yeah, I have many times, yeah. Beautiful thing. And, and the thing is, I love it because most of the time, the people that do that, they don't want other people to let them know what their right hand and the left hand's doing. It's done out of a really humble, quiet place. I love that. And, but, but what about this? Hey, listen, this isn't just for worshippers. No, you're such a worshipper. <laughs> Spontaneous moments of just pure love and joy and peace and righteousness, which is right living with God in the Holy Ghost. Now, cultivating this in yourself, cultivating this isn't about a five-step program or making a New Year's resolution. It doesn't work. I actually, I actually tried to make a, re a resolution this year. It didn't work. So, for those of you that didn't see that, I looked at my protruding belly. All right. But for the typing sake, if there's any going on. But it's the result of fruit put simply, meeting and falling in love with Jesus. And people say, ah, oh, it's you know, ashy gushy and all of this sort of stuff. But have you really fallen in love with Jesus or are you still really just kind of at the courting stage? Do you know what I mean? I like him. And he certainly seems to have blessed, you know, Maureen. And he's certainly blessed Dion. But I don't know. I don't know about me. I don't know if he wants to do it for me. So I'll just kind of like stick around and sniff around and see what, see what happens here. See whether or not he might want to bless me. Nice to be blessed, isn't it, Jane? Everybody wants a blessing. And that's okay. And everybody wants a revelation. They want a word from God, a prophetic word from God. And that's okay. I think that's it. That's okay. But revelation and comes and stays when it's direct from God to you and it's hot off the press. Do you know what I mean? It's too easy to piggyback. This is a term God gave me. To piggyback off someone else's revelation. And they, they end up wondering then. You end up wondering, what went wrong? It didn't work for me, you know? I'm not talking about learning and growing from hearing teaching like we've had over the last four weeks. That's not what I'm talking about because that's how you get faith muscles. Every week, week in, week out, building up, building up, building up. We can put faith and works together and go and save a soul or three. Yeah? We can do that by staying plugged in, by learning that faith and works have to work together. And that comes from loving Jesus in a pure childlike way. In fact, he said, if you don't be converted and become as children, you can't enter into the kingdom of God. 
So I always say to God, Lord, always help me find the child in me. And I know that must be really annoying at times for my wife, you know, because she just tires of me. <laughs> and that's all right. Um, but, you know, like the point is, if, if I'm childlike and don't carry malice and I'm quick to forgive and I'm walking in all of the things that I can to stay in tune with God, then the kingdom of God is expanding within me. Yeah, you can clap loud if you want to. I'm, I, I, I'll give you a microphone. You can, you can say amen. Because it's so important. So planting Jesus. And, and so, again, it comes down to soul winning, which is, I believe, the thrust of what we've been talking about. Do we want to stay in the church, sit here, incubated, or do we want to go to a world that's crying for the answer? And what is that answer? So it's easy for that to say, okay, well, let's do that. Let's go to the world crying for an answer. Many of us say, how on earth am I going to do it? I could never do what that person does. But Pastor Beast spoke about the oikos, which is you, you have influences. You have places where you can go and be that influence. And if it's just as simple, I can't tell you how many people have been coming to our house over the last few months because Leanne's got on this thing called Mandra Buy and Sell. And she keeps putting things on there and people just keep coming to the house and buying them. And I'm thinking to myself, oh, Lord, I hope the police don't think we're doing drugs or something. I'm, I'm not exaggerating. There are a lot of cars coming. And you know what? Out of those people that come, that's her oikos. Out of those people that come, she's had tears with some. She's had hugs with others. She's had people come and be different and changed and say, you, are you a Christian? Simple little thing like a little ticket at the back saying, bless the Lord, O my soul, and all that is within me. Simple. Oh, my God. A bit like you, B. I've got another 17 pages here, so. <laughs> I do want to share this, though. I want to talk a little bit about revelation. And, and somebody recently talked about a revelation of a lifeguard. And how important that role is and that Jesus is the ultimate lifeguard. Can I get... Joe, you got a quick sec? Can you come on up just a quick sec? Not with that computer, mate. Don't need the computer. <laughs> I mean, we're high tech, but not what I want. So, so many of you have seen this. So just imagine you're in the water, you're drowning. And you, actually, you look like you've been in the water. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah. And he starts to, the lifeguard comes up and says, come on, relax. And start kicking like there's no tomorrow. Go on, flap your arms and everything. Go on, no, no. You're drowning, man. You are drowning. You're drowning. How much harder now is it for this lifeguard to get here, turn him on his back and drag him back to, to the sea? Thanks, bro. To the shore. Thanks, Joe. How much harder do we make it for the Lord sometimes? He's there. He's ready to calm our seas. And we're kicking and struggling all over the place. It is true. I know because I've done it. Praise God. This piggybacking. That was an example of piggybacking revelation. And, and there's nothing wrong with that. So long as you know which part is yours. So long as you know which part is yours. Because God will feed that and he'll inject into that. His anointing. But there's already a really perfectly good Russell Jerems over here. I don't need to try and emulate that. I don't need to be a Russell. I need to be the best Lance I can be. And he needs to be the best Russell for the Lord he can be. And my time's running out. That's all it's saying. But I believe God is calling us to a deeper level of trusting him and seeking him. Seek and you'll find. He will calm the waters. He will bring you safely to the shore. There's so many scriptures we could talk about, but I just want a couple of final thought, thoughts. Today, I believe God wants to put on display His love. God is love. And 
we need to understand the benefit of what the Gospels offer us in teaching and what the Epistles offer us in teaching, the letters from the Apostles. You know, I encourage you, go ferociously for it. Read these things. There's answers in there for our lives. Be quick to forgive one another. That's hard. That, that can be hard. But if you can come to the point where you say, I'm sorry, I blew it, forgive me. Ephesians 4.32, be ye kind one to another. Amen. This is for Christ's sake. He, he did it for us so that we can do it for others. I see flames. When I, when I was preparing for this, I saw flames. And life can be like a furnace at times. Today, 39 or 38 degrees, whatever it was, it's hot and uncomfortable. But I see, I see one like the Son of Man standing with us in the flames. And the kind of flame that would melt steel on approach, yet we stand unburnt and unsinged in that presence. If the same Spirit that raised Christ from the dead dwells in you, it'll quicken your mortal body. Do you feel Jesus growing inside you every day? Selah. Take a moment to think about it. When you go home during the week, put your hand right now. Put your hand on your belly. Say, Lord, grow in me. Grow in me. Expand in me. Less of me. More of you. Less of me, more of you, Lord. Less of me, more of you. You see, we have a future, and I don't want us to forgive it. forget it. The here and now is real. But what we do here and now will decide our future address, and I want mine to be 777 for His Glory Boulevard, Eternityville. That's where I want to live. I want to enter his gates with thanksgiving. Let's just take a minute to pray. Would you do that? Would you, would you lay your hands just again on your, on your bellies, on your tummy? And begin to pray with the Spirit and with the understanding. Speak. David encouraged himself in the Lord. He said, why so downcast, oh, my soul? Put your trust, put your hope in God. David encouraged himself. In the Lord. Lord, I let's say this together. Let's pray this together. Lord, I have received you into my life to be my Lord. Lord, I've received you into my life to be my Lord. Your, your will be done in earth as it is in heaven. Grow in me today. Feed me by your word. Give me the courage and strength to plant Jesus in the areas that I have the influence to. Give me confidence to be bold about you in my life and in my community. Use me, Lord.